Hi everyone, welcome to Poppy DIY Crafts. Today we're going to be making some Petri style coasters. And we're going to be testing out some Let's Resin Opaque Alcohol Ink. This was sent to me to review from Let's Resin, so thank you so much. So what's really special about this alcohol ink is that the white is already mixed in. So this way, when you use their ink, you actually don't need to use the white to drop the ink down. The ink in these bottles are already pre-mixed, so all you have to do is drop the ink and it should sink. So I'm really, really excited to try this out. I think this is the first brand I've heard about that has the white mixed in already. So here are the instructions. Here's the instructions on how to cut the tips. As you can see here, it says important note. It's made for dropping in resin, not stirring with resin. If you stir with resin, colors may change. Number two, it's made for resin petri art. So the colors can sink without adding the white colors. However, if you add a white color on top, it will create a different effect and will sink deeper. It also says here the final result will be affected by many other factors, including the type of resin, the amount of ink we use, the temperature, the resin molds, and so forth. If you want them to sink deeper, you can also add a little bit of resin on top of the inks. It will create a different look. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at the colors. This is a set of 24, and as you can see, just from the top down, there's a whole bunch of different colors. Okay, here are the greens. We have mint green, jade green, dark green, and regular green. We also have four blues. We have a regular blue, sky blue, cobalt blue, and a sapphire blue. And here are the four purples, light purple, dark magenta, purple, and violet. Here are the reds. We have a light pink, a red, a raspberry, and a hot pink. Here's the yellow orange family. We have apricot, wheat, yellow, and light yellow. And finally, these last four, we have gray, black, caramel, and white. So before we start, we need to shake the bottle. As you can see here, some of the white has settled down to the bottom, and so if we don't mix it really well, the ink might not sink as far. Then taking our scissors and have some wipe here, we're going to cut the nozzle. And we've got to be careful because um, this is going to splatter a little bit. So as you can see, it got all over my scissors and also over my little towel. So it's a good idea to cover the nozzle when you cut them. This way you'll get less splatter. But you only had to do this one time. So once it's opened, then you won't have to do it again. That's our last one for the day. Now let's go ahead and mix our resin. And as always, when working with epoxy resin, make sure to have some safety equipment. So that means a respirator with an organic filter and also some gloves. Let's start by mixing the resin. Then we're going to pour the resin into the mold. Let's quickly clear out the bubbles. And let's start dropping the ink. I'm not really sure how much to use, so I'm just going to give it three layers of ink and hopefully we can get that to drop pretty deep.
For this one, I'm going to give it a quick blast of air. And on this last one, I'm just going to add a little bit more of resin on top just to see what happens. All right, everyone, so it's been a day and we are ready to demold. And just take a look at the back. It is so pretty. Oh my goodness. I really love how the inks just kind of melted together and form these really cool patterns. So let's go ahead and take out this first one. So here is the back. And here is the front. So I can see that it didn't drop too much, but it seems that like we got a splatter of inks that did drop. So a lot of the blue dropped down to the bottom. And the rest of the colors created this feathery effect. Okay, let's take a look at this middle one. This is the one where we use the heat gun to blow after we dropped in the ink. So let's see, that made a difference. Here is the back, sides. Okay, so none of the ink dropped all the way to the bottom, but we get this really cool kind of fuzzy feathery effect. You just have up close look. The colors are very, very vivid though. I do like that. And if you look here from the sides, there's a few strands of ink that did travel down. And this is the last one. This one is the one where we poured some resin over it after dropping the ink. So here is the back. This pink is so beautiful. Here is the side. I'm not seeing a lot dropping down. And here is the top. So once again, we didn't get a lot of dropping of the ink, but we did get a feathery kind of fuzzy effect. And just for fun with the leftovers, I did make this little tree here. Let's just take it out and see how it looked. So this one I dropped in the ink, but I also stirred it a bit just to get that ink down to the bottom. So this is what it looks like. I think it looks really cool. You can see the ink. You can see the ink that's not fully mixed in with the resin. All right, everyone, so here are the three Petri dish coasters that we made today. I think the results turned out pretty cool. I kind of wish they dropped a little bit more because that's the type of effect that I like to see. However, this effect is also very interesting. I think what I can do is also use this ink along with other brands to get a mixture of effects. That would be very, very neat. So let me know down below in the comment section if you like this type of effect. And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a big thumbs up and I'll see you next time. Bye!